of greater. I want to highlight another powerful occurrence that took place in this, in this verse. Look at it with me as they bring it up on the screen. Then Ezekiel said, he said, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And then he said, he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. And then he said this, he set me in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. I'd like to emphasize again the three, the three words in that verse. He set me. So the hand of the Lord was on Ezekiel. The Spirit of the Lord led Ezekiel. And now today I want to highlight for you the Spirit of the Lord position Ezekiel. This is such an important detail if you're going to experience the greater of God in your life. Because unless God positions you, unless God places you, unless God sets you where you're supposed to be, you will always lack protection, you will always lack provision, and you will never experience greater. Sure, we can set ourselves. We've proven it, right? Just pay somebody off and you'll be set, right? Just scratch their back and they scratch yours and you'll be set, right? But how many of you came to find out that that's just a temporary set, right? After a while, then it begins to shake and, 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 and now you don't feel as secure anymore. Why? Because God didn't set you. But I'll tell you what, God wants to set you, Dr. Marie. He does. And this is why this is so important. You know, in the Bible, you'll find stories of men and women who were used by God for specific purposes. These people, the Bible tells us, were positioned by God to be at the right place at the right time to change the course of history. We remember Esther, right? She was placed in a country, again, a prisoner of war. And then God told her uncle, tell her to go run for the pageant to be queen. Why would she run for a pageant to be queen to the enemies of her nation, right? But, but God sets people in certain places to fulfill his purpose. It may not make sense to us, but it makes a whole lot of sense to God. That even in the midst of ungodliness, God will set you. Because that's what happened to Esther. That's what happened to Daniel, right? They were set in these nations that didn't believe in God, and yet God set them to change the course of history. If truth be told, God positions you and I the exact same way. And although it's very often that we will question where we're placed, but can I tell you, God knows all and he sees all. He knows our hearts. He knows what decisions we will ultimately make. But I've come to understand some things about God. I've served God for 34 years, been saved for 44 years, uh, married my husband, came into the ministry, and it's been 34 years. And let me tell you, I can write a book on so many times, Celia, when I had questioned where God has placed me. You know why I questioned it? Because I didn't want to be there. Because it was awkward. It was not my thing. You know how we say, well, it's not my thing. <laughs> Be careful when you say it's not your thing because that's exactly where God will place you. I've learned it. And you know, in all the 30 something years of following God, in this last year that I've been here in American Samoa because of border closures, I have learned so much about God and the attributes of God that I've ever learned in the 30 years. You know why? Because I came with my little plan with a little pony suitcase that I was only going to be here for two and a half weeks. And now over a year later, I'm still here. Amen. And I have come to realize that I'm not here because of border closures. God has set me. With everything that has been happening and going on in my husband and my life, things, uh, spaces and places that God has brought us to for the sake of the gospel and the expansion of the influence of God, I've come to realize that it may have been it may have been confusing for me, but it sure wasn't confusing to God. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, I wish I could tell you I was such a woman of faith all these 12 months, and I, and I sat at the feet of Jesus and kept my eyes on Jesus. I would tell you that, but then my husband would tell me,
tell me something different. <laughs> I don't know if dad and mom would hear some of the screaming matches sometimes that go on in our, in our room next door, but it's because I was really mad at him. <laughs> While he was trying to teach me, no babe, God is setting us. You know, and I didn't want to be set by where God wanted to set me, I didn't want to be. But I've come to understand something about God that I want to share with you. Can I share with you what I've learned about God in, these, in this last 12 months? I've learned that God thinks long term. We're, in a, we're raised in a microwave generation to serve a crock pot God. So God thinks long term. What does that mean, Pastor? How does that look in my life? When I say God thinks long term, Sandy, it means God sets you now, but it's not necessarily for now. It's because in this now, he's preparing you for something that's coming later. So sometimes God sets you and it feels awkward. Why? Because it's not for that time, it's for another time down the line. So he sets you for another time. And so it feels awkward. It feels like you don't belong there. And so you sit there and you go, God, what am I doing here? And why am I here with these people? But God is setting you there for now. Why? Because he thinks long term. He's setting you there for now in that place that you don't want to be, with people you're not very comfortable with, with people that you don't really speak, really put their language. Because he's trying to set you for something that's coming later. So while we're questioning our placement in certain seasons, we have to keep in mind that we may be positioned by God for something that will come later. That is why it is so important that you hear and you know when God speaks. That's why we encourage you to do your, to read your word and journal. Why? Because it's so important to listen to God's leading, even when it doesn't make sense. So here Ezekiel is with a dream to be a pastor in Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. But the Bible says God set him in the middle of a valley. Not a valley crowd of people who shouted amen to his message, but a valley of dry as bones. Right? Ezekiel didn't even realize God was positioning him for his future, yet he had no idea what the future was because in captivity you don't see a future. You don't even want to dream of a future because you're scared that you might dream and it doesn't come to pass. But the Bible says God set him and he had no idea that God was setting him in a place of preparation for what was coming in his future. So let me ask you this morning, where has God positioned you? Where has God positioned you in this season of your life? Because where God has positioned you in life, it matters. Amen? And your heart attitude about where God positioned you is a very important part of the process of breaking. God will never leave you where you started or where you are now. His plan and his design is to always push you to greater. So Job teaches us something in Job 17 verse 9. He says, but principal people hold tight. They keep a firm grip on life. And they make sure that their clean, pure hands will get stronger and stronger. Are you a principled man? Are you a principled woman? If you're saying yes, how do you know that? You're the person that's not giving up. You're the person that's holding on tight. You're the person that's keeping a firm grip on life, making sure that your hands are clean. What does that mean? Making sure that you're living right. Because you don't get stronger living wrong. Just saying. I'm just saying. You get stronger by living clean. And so there are six heart attitudes that will position you for greatness. And I'm only going to cover a few today, and Pastor Dave will come next week and finish it off. But the first heart, heart attitude that 
that I want to mention this morning in your outline is humility. Humility positions you for greatness. Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 6, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Amen? Humility is such a huge word in the plan of God, folks. I want you to get it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you get it, okay? Proverbs 29, verse 23. It's not in your notes, but it's a good, good verse to note down. It tells us, pride lands you flat on your face. So if you're flat on your face, You know what got you there. I know you don't want to admit it. But the word says pride lands you flat on your face. But then it also says humility prepares you for honor. You want honor? Be humble. Because the Bible says humility prepares you. Let's remember, Ezekiel was not positioned in the valley of dry bones by his choice. He was positioned there by God's choice. He was set there by God's plan. Notice what Peter says. Peter says in, in 1 Peter 5, verse 6, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Church, the reward of humility always has a set time. I know some of you are probably, but it's been 10 years I've been walking in humility. There's a set time. The Bible says one day here is like a thousand, thousand years to God. So don't worry, we're on God's time. 